How's it going guys? Today's video is the final build for my Zombie Go Boom collaboration. I call it the Warszawa. It's named after the capital city of Poland, which is also known as the Phoenix City because of the really high number of wars that it's been through and survived. And also, in English, it looks like Warsaw, which is actually the whole reason that I named it that and had nothing to do with any of the other stuff, so sorry I lied. Now, I sized it to be directly in between the Sawblade Tomahawk and the Sawblade Battle Axe, but don't get me wrong, just because this isn't a two-handed weapon doesn't mean that this is for the little guys out there. This is heavy hardware, but I hear the Executioner is a pretty tough guy, so I don't think you should have a problem with it. It's got a paracord wrap handle, an aluminum frame so that it's not so heavy that it's useless, and then a 10-inch reverse sharpened saw blade. I'll explain why I reversed this one later in the video. Without further blue skidoo, let's build this thing. So as to be expected, we're going to be using another street sign for the main frame of this weapon. Just like the bone splitter and the saw blade tomahawk, this is a really simple build. The most difficult part is the creativity that goes into making a really unique weapon. But one thing you're most definitely going to learn if you watch more of my videos is that I promote creators, not copycats. I'll show you how to make all these weapons, but as for the curvatures of the handle and all the little details that I put into these things, I want you guys to come up with those things on your own. Trust me, it's so much more rewarding to hold something that you know you just made, that you designed it and you put your own creativity into it rather than just printing something off the internet and then cutting it out in sheet metal. So creativity step one, get some paper. Chances are you're not gonna get what's in your mind correct the very first time. You're gonna want something that you can do and if you don't like it, you can just crumple it up and throw it away rather than cutting it straight out of your sheet metal and then ruining it if you don't like what you just did. So this is the rough draft of the handle that I've got so far. You can see that I've gone with a pretty heavy curve on it. The reason I did that was to expose more of the teeth on the inside edge of it. If I were to make the handle just straight cross like that you would only really get the outside edge. Having the inner teeth exposed enables you to fight in much closer quarters. It's really the difference between fighting with a hatchet and with a sickle. It might not seem like that much but when you've got somebody on top of you trying to bite your face open you're gonna notice the difference between a weapon with a forward facing blade and one with a blade on the inside. I traced out the saw blade onto it so I could better visualize the concept that I have in my mind right now and it also makes it a lot easier to trace out and draw and cut out things once I actually have it finished. So I cut out my sensor and I traced it on both sides. Now all I gotta do is cut these out with a jigsaw and then I've got my brackets. So I cut out both of the brackets and I cut off the back edge of the saw blade. If you don't want to cut off the back edge, that's fine. My personal preference is just not having an equal number of sharp objects pointing at myself and my enemy at all times from my own weapon, no less. If you do want to cut off the back edge of your saw blade though, make sure you pay special attention that you do not cut through the arbor or this little hole right here because then you're gonna have to drill another one. And if you've ever tried to drill a hole through a saw blade or even cut it for that matter, it's not a fun experience. And by the way, I cut the saw blade using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. I have cut thinner saw blades before with a jigsaw. I would never really try it with something this thick. You're most likely going to want to go with the angle grinder. So first off, lay your saw blade down on your bracket and use a sharpie to mark out where you're going to cut your hole. Now clamp your brackets together in a vise and use either a really small hole saw or a really big drill bit to drill the hole. We've got the holes drilled into the bracket, but before we can put the saw blade into the brackets, we've got to do the most dangerous, difficult difficult, tedious part of the whole entire build, and that is sharpening the teeth on the saw blade. Now when I say sharpen the teeth on the saw blade, I don't mean make the teeth more pointy. That would be the case if I was attaching the saw blade onto it this way and chopping in that direction, but I'm attaching it on this way to prevent any snagging, because somebody brought up a really good point. In my last two saw blade axe videos, what I thought would make the most sense is to have the teeth facing in the direction that they would be facing if you actually had it in a cutting power tool. And if you don't have blades on the edge, that does make the most sense because it penetrates as opposed to just these dull edges whacking into stuff. But the problem with that is if you've got this overhang right here, your weapon is basically a giant fish hook. In the second you chop into anything, it's going to be basically impossible to pull it back out. So by just flipping it this way and putting blade edges on each and every single one of these teeth, you can avoid that problem completely. The only problem with that is you have to put a blade edge on each and every single one of these teeth. To blade all the teeth, I'm going to be using my trusty old angle grinder. Now typically when you're putting a blade on something with an angle grinder, you want to use the thicker grinding wheel. But in this scenario, these spaces right here are really small and it would be really difficult to get to the bottom of each and every single one of these teeth with the big thick grinding wheel. So I'm going to have to use the cutoff wheel. And guys, I cannot stress the importance of using face and neck protection while using high speed heavy duty rotary tools enough. Just recently, my uncle 
uncle was using an angle grinder just like this one. He wasn't doing anything weird with it. He was using it exactly the way you're supposed to use it. Out of nowhere, the disc just explodes. A piece of it flies, hits him in the cheek. He gets this four inch gash that is so deep he has to get stitches in his gums. You can imagine what would happen if it just hit a couple inches lower, got him in the jugular. I'd be one uncle short. All I'm saying is guys, you can buy construction hats with face shields for like $11 online. Trust me, it's worth it. This is actually not that bad. I've been doing it for two minutes maybe. I've already got six teeth done. As you can see, all I've really done is clamped it in my vise and then I'm using my angle grinder to sharpen all the teeth. If you don't have a way to hold your saw blade in place really, really well, I would suggest not even sharpening the teeth. Just whatever you do, don't hold the saw blade and sharpen it, please. So I just finished and I think it looks pretty awesome. No, they're not like razor blades now, but they're a lot better than just the flat edge that they were before. So then I put the saw blade onto the bracket and then I take a sharpie and make dots all along the edge of the saw blade. These are the holes that I'm going to drill through to put my rivets in. So this looks pretty freaking awesome, but it's not done yet. What I've done is I bolted it together and I drilled all the rivet holes and the dowel pin holes that I'm going to be using. And now that I've got all the holes drilled, I can paint all the pieces. And by the way, don't pay any attention to this piece right here. I just added it on there for style. Now I've got all the pieces painted with some awesome green decals. Now the very last thing you're going to do before you bolt and rivet this whole thing together is just take some paper and make a really quick tracing of a section of the handle. And now you're free to bolt and rivet everything together. If you're kind of confused as to how to put this thing together, all you really do, one lock washer, one regular washer, then if you decided to go with the little detail thing, then you put that on the bolt. Now one of the brackets, you can place a rivet through one of the holes to make sure it's lined up correctly. Now your saw blade goes on, then the second bracket, the second detail piece, the regular washer, the lock washer, and then finally the nut. Tighten the nut and the bolt until the lock washer is completely flat, and then now begins the laborious process of popping all these rivets. And just in case, do not forget to put your spacer inside the handle. Now flatten all of your rivets. Use an angle grinder to trim down that really big bolt that we used in the arbor of the saw blade. Put a handle on it with the same method that we used for the bone splitter. And there you have a totally bad butt tool for the dispatching of zombies. I call the Barshava Riot Shield combo Zombane. And that concludes the Zombie Go Boom build series, kinda. Technically, the fourth build video would be the Warhammer video, because as per request, I'm sending them the fledgling after some minor modifications. I'm gonna redo the handle, because as you can see, it's like rotting away. I don't know what the heck happened there, that never happened to me before. But I'm also cutting off this little spike at the end, because after swinging it around for a while, it kinda starts to stab you on the wrist. If you got zombie blood all over your weapon, that's a definite no-no, so little vestigial spike, you will be missed. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be shipping these weapons out ASAP. I'm actually so freaking excited about this whole zombie go boom thing. This really could finally be that boost that I've been waiting for this whole entire time for my whole professional YouTubing dream thing to finally come true. So uh, again, guys, just thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.